is this the new Splinter Twin? <laughs> Watch, that watch that out was my you. YouTube yeah, reaction yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the music? You saw the thumbnail. We're talking about dead modern cards. Because there are many, modern has a long past and has a lot of really fun cards we like playing with. And some of them, they got banned. We can't play with them. But some of them, they got power creeped. And we're there to talk about it today. We asked you guys in the comments, in the community post, to give us the names of the cards you loved playing that you don't get to play anymore. And we just put them all in a hat. Shaking it up, and we're gonna go through them together. But before, if you do want to be able to leave, we're gonna do this again. If you guys like this, we're gonna respond to your comments again. If you like this, the only way to see it is to be subbed because we show up in your feed then. That's where our community posts show up. So if you wanna participate next time and suggest some cards, just click that sub button. If you're not anywhere, it doesn't cost you anything except you get to answer our, our polls. I mean, it also helps the channel a bunch and uh, another way that the channel can help you is by reminding you to turn on two-factor authentication on card market. Like it's, it's a good thing. <laughs> it is. No, seriously. Uh, this was a janky transition, but it's seriously a very good thing for your card market account because with your card market account, you have money on there. You can buy stuff. You can sell stuff. Let's not get into any troubles by enabling two-factor authentication. And if it's too much hassle, you know, a lot of people are, oh, it's so annoying always having to check my phone. Yes, we get that. And that's why I really love this feature about card market personally, you can enable it only for specific actions, like only when I want to withdraw money and buy stuff. That's the worst case is already covered. So go ahead, check it out, enable it uh, however you want to. And with that out of the way, let's get into the Are you uh, two-factor authenticated? Of course I am. Ah, oh, see, be like TOEFL. All right, Yemen, would you like to kick things off? Of course. All right. Uh, cards that are no longer present in modern. Well, they're still modern. Ray Tal says, I miss Soul Warden. So do I. No, honestly, I don't, I don't, miss, I don't miss it. 112 life total. In paper, it's hellish to keep track of the triggers. And also playing against it felt very punishing. I hated playing against it with like young Pyromancer or Delver because if this was an aggro deck and they gained so much life. Um, but like, why, why did it go? The life payoff isn't good enough. But back then it was good enough. I would argue it was never good enough. I, yeah, I, I'd, say, I'd say it was never a tier one deck. It was a mix of Sarah Ascendant with the show your hand mm, yeah, kind of yeah, thing, yeah. mixed together with Johnny's Pride Mate, right? Back then, they might not have been powerful enough, but these days, you just fury and their bard is gone. You just solitude and their only threat is gone. But how would you make this card better again? Because uh, on, on uh, the MTG Goldfish podcast, they're talking about how would you make a light gain spell? How much would you have to push it? to be modern playable. And they settled on two mana, gain 20 life. Two mana, gain 20 so life. how would you fix a one mana, one one that gains like, life? To fix the deck or the card? I mean, you can basically push two knobs. You make the card just generally good, and then it might be just a one drop that's acceptable. Like you can make it a, maybe a two two. Yeah, but you wouldn't buy, buy <laughs> one that. One mana, two two that gains you life every yeah, time you. Or you add something that's already gives you the payoff for getting the life. Yeah, right. Maybe a combination of Soul Warden and a Johnny's Pride Mate is what we need. So no, actually, you, no, we don't need that. a creature enters the battlefield, it gets plus one, plus one counter and gains a life. Yeah. Mm. You, you'd play that, you'd play Empty the Warrens, <laughs> and then you attack with three and gain three life. That, that actually would not be that bad. So, it's like the angel so like. we're here talking about a one mana one one gain that always gains life and then also has some other payoff that's life it, related, it needs right? More, it, it, it needs, needs a lot more. of work. Yeah. All so right. Would you yes. like the honors? I didn't that's, buy it. That's not a thing. <laughs> so Danny JPCW says, the four color gifts rock deck where your broken start was turned for gifts into Umber, Rites, and Iona, <laughs> or Elish Noin. Those were the days. I remember that deck being so cool because like you had that thing where you guys talked about in the other video where if you can't search your deck, you're like, I promise you, these are the only two cards. It's Unburial yeah. Rites and Elish Norn. The, the first time you play against that deck and they search up two, like they resolve gifts and you're like, yes, I get to make a choice. And they <laughs> search up two cards and you're like, mind blown because, oh my God, you see it coming, right? You put the Unburial Rites into the graveyard, you turn five, they untap, oh yeah, all right. So you see it coming and you're just blown away. Um, yeah, so why did that one just not do anything? Well, the reanimator is just not good enough and turn five is not good enough. Yeah, turn four, giving the option to next turn reanimate an Elish yeah. Norn. There's nothing against turn four Omnath. Though. You can reanimate Omnath. <laughs> but I have a very good fix for it. All right. Make our gifts cost three. Yeah, Because Honestly, then you can go on to the curve of two, three. Like, three, four. I don't think that would be good enough because 
four mana Elish Norn would would see play. Well, but four you, mana Elish Norn with hoops to jump through. Well, I don't yeah, think it's it's effectively seven mana. But I, I mean, you get you get to do seven mana tutor a, card, a creature from your deck and put Any it into play. They won't recover. And it's, it's the Splinter Twin thing where you keep out the three mana and then you could counter something. And yeah. if you don't, haha, -ha, you put these two cards in your graveyard and then. All right, three we, cost gift. Beautiful. I have Alex B, Lantern of Insight, Ensnaring Bridge, and Company. Um, Lantern of Insight, I honestly, I don't want to see that come back. That was miserable to play against. But I think all of the formats should have something as... For a while it disappeared because everything killed artifacts, right? Yeah. You have Colligan's command and everything. But yeah, even even like with an es established bridge, like a Hammer Time player can still set up something where they swing with an Ornithopter and then ha <laughs> double hammer or something like that. So that feels kind of weird. Also, the four color element deck just kind of handles everything weird thrown at them just by being an 80 card deck with tutors. And doesn't Omnath also kill on his own? Like, doesn't he? Doesn't oh, yeah, right. Yeah, he doesn't need to attack. No. Yeah, just play on that four damage each turn. I don't think this deck is completely dead. It's just tier two, maybe. There might be like environments where if you have the right set of cards and answers, this can still live. But it's. it's I, I think this is a world where if you bring this to an event, you just go to time against all your on math <laughs> decks, and then it's. So, so, how do we. How do we. Like, is there a way to fix Lantern of Inside specifically if we're talking about that card to make bring. It draw seven times. That's a good fix, Toffle. You can, can make we, a draw card when you crack it. We can also give it some activated ability, like maybe integrate a Codex Shredder into this where you can tap it to mill one card. Yeah. That's... That might just be too much. Fix. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Root of Pi. Mm. I miss Huntmaster of the Fells. Me too, you know? <laughs> Huntmaster of the Fells. Geist of Centraf, Bob, and Electrolyze. Yeah. Okay, Huntmaster of the Fells, that card is just a joke <laughs> compared to today's cards. Yeah. I mean, yeah. since era of Questing Beast stuff, I think. Uh, yeah, I remember being cast Huntmasters uh, when they used to put it in Jun against me and being like, I will never recover of this value wise. Electrolyzing the Huntmaster actually felt like, oh, that's like. And, and, and traded even. Yeah, yeah we yeah. traded even. Hopefully, Eve. this one card I drew deals with the 2 2 wolf yeah. somehow. <laughs> Geist of Sentraft, yeah, I also haven't seen that in a while. Why, why did that one a leave? 3 mana 6 6 trample would still not see play. Like, the, the 2 2 was just not strong enough. But right? it's, it's got hexproof. Yeah. Everything can block a 2 2. Mm. Like, you could even just block with your run. Yeah, I guess. Back then it was so strong. I remember that was when I started. Like it was so devastating to see that Geist and knowing I can't do anything against it. It was also played in the Jeskai mid range decks, right? That that was their main win con. It was they clear the board and eventually because you couldn't attack it unless you pyroclasm or something or you played your own Geist of Saint Thrax. Yeah. That was the main way you killed it. It was the best hexproof beater after you've cleared the board. Wild times. Just tapping out three mana for no effect. It just doesn't do it anymore. Like you have two mana, seven, seven flyers and stuff. All right, so how do, how do we go about fixing these old cards? First Huntmaster. I think you should at least make it like uncounterable maybe? How about just creating additional wolf tokens? A Huntmaster can create, have more than one wolf ally, right? Like it's a Huntmaster. It's yeah. got two, three wolves coming what, along. Okay, what if you give him the Grave Titan Claws? Huntmaster. Enters the battlefield with two, two, twos. And then when it attacks, it makes two more wolves. And if your opponent doesn't play anything, it flips and makes more wolves. Yeah, like the, like, like the um, Huntmaster from Innistrad. Yeah. yeah, it's not like people are going around playing Grape Titan anyways. That yeah. one also needs a buff. So what if you combine them? The question is, does that become good enough? Hunt Titan of the Fell. <laughs> Hunt Titan. <laughs> Kyrnos, God of the Storms. <laughs> oh, hi, miss the days before Teferi 3, ending March, Brazen Bar, etc. That's Lodicent. I mean, that card was the finisher of Splinter Twin. The joke was, you, you played against Splinter Twin, and you were like, oh no, I gotta disrupt the combo. And then they boarded in like two copies of that card, and they just... <laughs> you did like three damage! It's like half of three damage. You didn't even get to control yeah. it. That was the finisher, so what happened? It's five mana sorcery. <laughs> <laughs> and indestructible isn't as good as it used to be, you know? Also, Splinter Twin is not even around, so mm. it's not even the plan B to plan A anymore. No. I think the way to fix this would be to make it always a creature. And yeah, an always an indestructible creature. You can't. Like, it's a god, you can't do this. Yeah, but okay, so demote him. <laughs> demote, demote him! <laughs> You're like a half god. <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> can you fire gods? Like, does that work? Perforos is already fired. Okay, here's my suggestion. Wow. So here's my suggestion. Give him Flash. It's nah. the God of Storms, you know? All right, I, I like the, like, I, it doesn't break the card flavor-wise. Does it make the card good enough, though? 
No. Remove a mana. Four mana. Remove a mana. Four mana and flash. At that point, I could... And, or, for, just flash. And then in your upkeep, before you draw, you scry one. Okay, this, oh. again, this again too, this is... This it's easy. Typing. It's getting it's getting very complicated, but that's very 2022 magic, right? Yeah. Like just adding ah, lines I also forgot, um, when you reveal like a red card, you specialize <laughs> into other gods. Yeah. And, and then... Oh, and you reveal a deck that you put aside with you beforehand, where yeah. you can generate one of those tokens. Exactly. You've got 15, but you pick six at random at the beginning of the game. Exactly. But if you hit Devotion 13, then he actually becomes an enchantment again. And then he just deals 50 damage. Do, yeah. do you see the, the line at the bottom of the screen, right? The YouTube play thing going forward? All the rest of this is just us explaining <laughs> yeah. the cards. There's, there's no more cards, it's just Karanos adding. Okay, I think we're done with that. You go ahead. Um, Joshua Moyer asks, Unfortunately, Snapcaster Mage does not have enough powerful spells to keep up with the current format. Will always own a playset, though. Oh, Joshua Moyer Poor loves Snapcaster, Snapcaster Mage, Mage, but that one still sees play, doesn't it? Well, it, it, I don't think that card is dead. It shows up every once in a while in decks that aren't top tier, but still, it's a modern card. There's a good spell you want to flashback? Good enough. Yeah. It's not that Snapcaster's bad. Paying two mana to flashback anything in your graveyard and have a bo uh, body on the board is not that bad. The, the problem is that a lot of the modern decks are either very non-centric on spells or focused on creatures with all the solitudes and stuff. And so it's really hard to find room for spells and then also have them in your graveyard if you want to like not delve them. So yeah, I guess. It just I, asks you a lot. I'd say Merktide would play Snapcaster if not for Merktide delving away the spells, yeah. right? Because they can make use of the 2-1 seen by Ragavan. Right, no, Ragavan isn't a pure 2-1, but I think they could make use of the body make use of the spell, but they delve them away, so... Um, you can make him look at Exile. After what if it What if it was two mana? Target a, a spell in your graveyard that costs three mana or less, cast it for free. Like del uh, Dwellers, but mm, a two but mana instant cheaper. speed. All right, Snapcaster Mage, either not dead yet, or we can fix it by, you know, adding some power and free spells, because when has free spells ever gone wrong? Oh, the word really? free and magic. TWM has a classic. Tarmogoyf, sad face. Oh. <laughs> Tarmogoyf, I used to. I, I once sold my playset for like 80, 90 euros a piece. I think ever since Fatal Push was printed, Tarmogoyf has been going downhill. And it's sad because they come in the same team. Yeah. Right? They're supposed to be played together. Yeah. Well, just add more card types. Add the cards up to 20 and then, <laughs> and then, then make those card types playable by everyone, make new players really confused. No. Okay, here's the thing. You make like a, you know, tar fire that they only play because it has two yeah. things. Just make a tar fire that doesn't do anything, just one mana, 14 card types. Okay. <laughs> what if instead, would it be playable if it was two mana, X1 uh, plus X, and it was double the amount of types you had in your graveyard? So you could easily make it maybe a well, not easily at all, but easily make it like an eight As Toffel said, like, I think vanilla creatures just have a tough life these days, so I think that's a good question. Like, Geist of Centraft is also pure stats, but... It gives a lot it, of life. Honestly, I really like the the idea because it pushes it in exactly the direction that it used to shine. It used to shine in, like, zoo decks because it was a powerful threat early, which it once again would become. And I think even stuff like uh, Jund could play it because it's just... Yeah, Solid enough stats. If I mean, you would just be. play it, crack a fetch, and burn a creature, it's a six power. Yeah, it's like right. a start like fetch, thoughtsies, then land this. It's like a six, seven, yeah. I think it would see play. Finally, we got stats that would see play. <laughs> stats that would see it's play. It's being absurd. The question now becomes, is that overpowered? But that's not our problem to solve. I, I mean, it's really hard to Damn. make a vanilla card overpowered. All right. Cut Senpai says Path to Exile. What is important to exile right now? Are there threats in the format that you can't have enter the graveyard? But in general, I feel like uh, back in the day, this was discussed a lot where giving them a land is a huge downside and many players didn't realize this. And this has just come to show like this downside has really hit since we've got better removal spells. Also Imagine the... you have to exile a creature and then their Omnath gets four yeah. mana. <laughs> Yonk. It's... You give them an advantage no matter where in the game. See, so we would have to change the downside. Is exile two creatures too powerful for the yeah, downside? I think you'd go in the other direction. You just make the swords to plowshares. I think swords to plowshares would be fine. Exiling two creatures, let's say two mana. We make this double um, path to exile 
but with one basic land they get or something. We make a settle the record, just without a settle the <laughs> We just get any, any <laughs> amount of creatures and then they get a land for each. Wait, but is it one mana exile any amount of creatures and they get a land for each? No. Or? People scale their creatures, right? It's not that we'll be surprised, oh, you for one mana you wrap my No, board. I think that's too ridiculous against any sort of aggro deck. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I think that would make too many things bad. How about multi-kicker path to exile? Just copy the so spell. White? White, oh, white, just white, white, for white. Two, white, white, white for three, white, white, yeah. white for four. Exactly. Okay. I think that would be fair. That would be playable. Sounds Fixed. A, sounds a bit <laughs> Fixed. Fixed. We need a gavel next time we do this. <laughs> donk. donk. <laughs> All right. Grand Vosniag. Threads of disloyalty with Dark and Shadow Jackals used to be reasonable control cards. Now, if played, I assume most opponents would have to read them. Mind control in itself just isn't playable these days, no matter the cost. Well, I'm pretty sure if you remove the two tapping costs from Shackles, it's yeah. good enough. Like, that'd be strong. All right. You so just, you just have a three mana artifact that taps to switch control. Because, like, imagine against Hammer Time, you steal their attacking creature, mm. whichever they put the hammer on. And then they have to redo their shit again. So Wait. maybe we don't have to go all the way, but just reduce it to one mana? No. I think it would not see that much play, but would see some play if you made it still care about islands, but just be a free tap. You could do two mana and one. That seems very, very strong. I, I think well, that you would... you still have to scale like, your islands. Like, you can't steal a Merc type. I, I, I still think it wouldn't see that much play. All right, so the Dark on Shackles, two mana to cast, one to activate. Threads of Disloyalty, though, like... I mean, four mana control magic is already unreasonable. So just three mana, steal any creature. I think I'm on team make it cost two mana, but keep the... Um... No, I, I, I have the solution. I like your idea. So we're gonna make it two mana. We're gonna steal only stuff that costs one, because nothing, like, there's no two you want to steal. Yeah. And then you give it cycling. I think not just one, because what if we make Tarmogoyf better and then they start needing <laughs> to steal Tarmogoyf? Well, if Tarmogoyf, like, what, what it costs two when you want to steal? Right now, you maybe. You against someone who just hopped out of a time machine and cast Dark Confident against you, and then you need to steal it. And then you cycle it. Give it a cycling blue, done. Fixed. <laughs> cycling blue it is. King Tittles, Tittles, <laughs> Tittle, come on, Todd, says uh, Storm. We're not talking about a card, we're talking about a whole archetype now. Oh, All right. just Storm? I think what killed Storm was mostly a long series of banning. The Storm deck that we have is, like, all other decks have grown. We've got Hammer Time, that's a faster combo deck. We've got uh, Omnath, that's a better mid-range deck. But Storm never got any new toys to play with. You're telling me that if you bring back all the rituals, ponder, Preordain, this deck is still bad. No. And Jitaxian Pro. I think if you bring back Rite of Flame... I'm I, not sure, I'm not convinced. I'm, I think... I think this, this deck is not made bad by Power Creep, it's made bad by a severe amount of banning. I don't know, it's hard to tell. I, I don't think unbanning those would bring it back. We Modern have, has just become a different format. We'd have to see, we need to make another, another no ban list Modern yeah, video. Dude. And just put Storm? Storm against whatever else, like right. some Oko shenanigans. <laughs> well, you will see this if you follow the upcoming feed, and if you stay subbed, you'll maybe get to see that video. We'll get to work on it. In the meantime, don't forget two-factor. Two-factor authentication. Enabling that will protect your account from a bunch of bad stuff. Uh, if you want to figure out how it works or how to enable it, just head to you, the security tab of your card market account. And in the meantime, maybe we'll see you in the next one. We still have a lot of names in the hat, but we'll wish you a nice one and see you in the next video.